What do animal mittens and Ken dolls have in common? Absolutely nothing. Hi, my name is Diane and this is my pig bathtub. Today I want to share with you a little bit of some of the items that I make when I sell at my markets. Um, I've really been on a huge mitten phase lately and I, that's what I'm going to be kind of concentrating on this fall when I sell at my really big market in three and a half, four months time. Uh, so how did I get here? Well, I started knitting, I'm going to say 16, 17, maybe 18 years ago. And I learned from a coworker at a job I wasn't a super fan of, but I will always be grateful for that job because on my lunch hour, she taught me how to knit. I would go away at the end of the day with my little knitted dishcloth on my needles and practice, practice, practice at home and come back with a disaster. And she would fix it for me and I would do it again. And eventually it was no longer a disaster. It just magically started looking like something. It looked like a dishcloth. I should have saved that first dishcloth because I've come a long way. So I started knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting. And I was on a budget, so I wasn't really buying any high-end yarns. I still don't really buy any high-end yarn because of the, the items that I make. But um, the next thing you know, I just had a pile of stuff everywhere. I had become Oprah. You get a scarf. You get a scarf. You get a scarf. I was just gifting everything I was making. And I was actually getting a lot of compliments for the items that I was making. And I had mastered the art of making mittens. And I was compiling a whole bunch of stock because really nobody else wanted my knitting. I had given away enough. So I decided I was gonna do a market. I was a girl living on her own at the time and who wouldn't want some extra cash? at the very least, extra cash to buy more yarn. So I did a market and I did incredibly well. I actually kind of convinced a couple people to go in with me at this market. First market, I was hooked. And I soon realized after doing the market for a couple years that the market was getting really oversaturated with other knitters and other crocheters and people that were making very like-minded items like myself because I was making very basic things and I had to start really thinking out of the box. So my then boyfriend, now husband, I'm just going to call him Hubs from now on on all my videos so you know who I'm talking about. Hubs and I are hanging out and I said to him, I got to figure out how to make something that's going to really stand out. It's going to be super unique. People are going to want this. Like, what can I make? So we're brainstorming. And you know how when you brainstorm, you're just throwing out ideas and you're laughing and you're like kind of getting all these things figured out. And he looks at me, super deadpan, super serious, chicken mittens. Like chicken mittens, how the heck? I don't even know how to make chicken mittens. How can I make chicken mittens? He goes, figure it out. So I went to Google like anybody would and I looked it up. Chicken mitten pattern. Nope. I, uh, I'm sure there's some out there now. Went to Ravelry and kind of looked it up. Chicken mitten pattern. Well, there was the like intarsia ones where people use a couple different colors and knit an actual picture of something but not a pair of mittens that kind of looked like chickens. So that was essentially my goal. And um, I went away, I worked at it. In my opinion, I perfected it. 
and I can't even tell you how many pairs I have sold. I'm not exaggerating. I must have sold at least 100 pairs of chicken mittens, adult chicken mittens. Are you ready? Hello, chicken mittens. These have always been popular. They continue to be popular. I make them in some different colors. The other one that's super popular is, just putting them on my hands to show them better, the rainbow chicken. Because if you're gonna wear a pair of chicken mint mittens, it might as well be the rainbow pair. I only made chicken mittens for, for many years and then I wanted to branch out. I wanted to make some other things. So the next thing I came up with, which is also very popular, trying to get my hands in here, the kitten mitten. I make these in a variety of colors. Always a good time. Cat people tend to like them. And if you're making a pair of cat mittens, and you've perfected the ears, it's very easy to change the color and turn it into fox mittens. I do make a fox stole as well that um, has a loop behind its head and you can pull it around your neck. So it's like almost like a vegan fox stole. So they're a nice combo. Then I thought, what can I make? What else can I possibly make from the same pattern cabled pattern of mittens. Don't ask me where I come up with this stuff. Welcome to what goes on in between my ears. Pig mittens. Pig mittens. Yep. And if you're making a pair of pig mittens, it's very easy because the ears are the same and the snout is the same to turn them into, are you ready for this? Pug mittens. I mean, the tongue gets, gets me every time. And I'm gonna introduce you to my latest creation. I'm a little on the fence about this. I don't know if I'm gonna make any more because I'm not, I'm not feeling it. So I would really, really appreciate your feedback on this cow mittens. Now, I like the ears. I like the nose. I don't know what you call it. I don't know if I should put, take the, get rid of this and do little horns. I kind of liked this little fluffy thing, which could be like hair in the middle. I have to figure out how to do a couple of spots. Sorry, I'm losing my words already. So that's what I make. I do make some knitted animals. I use some other people's patterns. Um, and I'll share that stuff with you. I used to make a lot of stuffed owls and I would weight them with playground sand. I do make those chickens. I don't know if you saw my chicken days video, the big chickens, those are weighted with playground sand. It can be used as doorstops. And also they just sit up nicer. So I make chickens, I make owls. I've got some yarn that I wanna try and make owls with this year. So I'll share that with you when I make them. I have all these ideas. I just need to stop working so I can make this stuff. But I've never made socks. I've never made a shawl. I've never made a sweater for myself. I don't know if I'm a knitter for myself. I'm a knitter, a knitter for others. And it's not even really about making the money it's selling at these markets. Like it's a hobby. I, I'm, my arms will fall off. I will never make enough product to be able to support myself throughout the year. But it's a great little side gig 
and I've done some really great things with my knitting money. I took myself to Mexico. I, um, we built our screen room on the back of our house, which I'll show you some one time because it's like one of my favorite places to knit. It's just been too hot to sit out there. I've put money down on my mortgage when I was living by myself. I always save my knitting money, is what I call it, my knitting money, for special things. So yeah, I, I'm never gonna make a sweater, but I did make one sweater one time. For my Ken doll, this is my knitted sweater. Why do I have a Ken doll, do you ask? I think, it's, I think this is called a raglan sweater, actually, with the, the things. Please let me talk about my Ken doll for just a few moments. I'll try not to take over this video with Ken, but it might end up being like that. Here's my Ken doll story. So as a child, I never had a Ken doll. I always wanted a Ken doll. My girlfriends would come over and bring their Barbies and we, you know, we would play Barbies and they had Ken dolls. They had more than one. Their Barbies had choices of who they wanted to date and mine went dateless. I was so desperate eventually, I actually cut off the hair of one of my Barbies. It wasn't a Barbie brand, it was some other brand. She had dark hair. I cut her hair super short and then I turned her head backwards and turned her back around so she was flat chested and that was my Barbie's date. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, you guys are really seeing the freak flag of, my, of mine fly today. Um, so I would always tease my mom and say, you know, all these relationships I've been in as an adult aren't working out because I never had a Ken doll. I never learned how to play with boys when I was a young girl and I don't know how to play with boys now. So one year, we uh, always do an adult gift exchange for Christmas, and my sister's father-in-law pulled my name, and he bought me Ken. Now, Ken never had this sweater. I obviously knit him this sweater. Uh, Ken arrived with these wonderful trousers that were, were sewn by my my father my sister's father-in-law's wife my sister's mother-in-law and the shoes were donated by her sister-in-law and he had this lovely turtleneck that was also sewn by her mother-in-law and unfortunately i had to get rid of the turtleneck because uh it was badly um stained by fake vampire blood which is a whole other story I used to work in a high school and I brought Ken to work and he sat on my desk and the teenagers thought there was something severely wrong with me. Who's that? Who's that guy? Why do you have a doll on your desk? I'm like, that's Mr. Doll to you. So after a while, I mean, Ken became so popular that they would actually come into the library and say hi to him and not me. Um, to the point that he was incredibly popular with the ladies and a couple of the girls actually took him to grad. I had a tuxedo for him and um, these were students I trusted, highly trusted because I would not just give anyone my Ken doll. And uh, he was their grad date. Um, one girl in particular took him to the after party, which was a toga party, and he came back in a washcloth wrapped like a toga. So that happened. And uh, he's kind of like a flat Stanley. He has traveled the world. Uh, students and staff have taken him on trips and they have always brought him back. He has gone to China. Uh, he's gone to the UK. He has uh, gone to Mexico. I mean, the guy's been around. Uh, one student in particular really enjoyed him that he liked to dress him up. 
and I had various pieces of clothing for him, of course. Uh, so much to the point that he made him little montages on my desk. And my favorite, which I actually recently found on my phone and I'm going to share with you is Ken in a Marathon. So take a look at this. Are you still watching? So those are my mittens. That's my Ken doll. Um, this is me. Thank you for watching. I hope to see some of your comments about the cow mittens or other mittens you may think would be uh, popular and somewhat easy to pattern. do. That is actually the pattern, if you recognize it, from the vampire movie uh, Twilight. Uh, Belle, the main character, wore these mittens, but they were actually like way up to here. And it's a free pattern online. Uh, if I can find it, I'll put the link in the comments. And I just shortened the length of the mitten. And it's my go-to mitten. I use a five weight yarn to knit with it. Uh, the Patton's Shetland Chunky Yarn works up beautifully with it. But I have also, and I use a 5.5 millimeter double pointed needle. I also have used um, uh, Color Made Easy yarn, which is, I believe it's a Lion brand. And that's a thicker yarn, so I use a 5.0 double-pointed needle to make that, but that has sadly been discontinued. Uh, that is the same yarn as this. So it knits up really nice. It's 100% acrylic and um, That's my story about my mittens and my Ken doll. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this. Um, I will be doing a chicken mitten tutorial sometime in July. I gotta figure out my camera angle so that I can show my hands and do it like overhead. It's time to go. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.